All right, everybody, welcome to the video here for lesson number seven. All right, so for this video, we're going to go through the entire lesson. Uh, so if you just need the homework, just fast forward to wherever you see the homework assignment. All right, but let's get started here. So the opening exercise says uh, to tr solve the three equations that are given. So if we wanted to solve 2x equals 14, we would divide both sides by 2 and say x equals 7. That's pretty easy. For part B, if we wanted to solve this, we would square root both sides. And we'd say x equals plus or minus the square root of 9, so x equals plus or minus 3. Now, all that's great, but that has nothing to do with what we're doing now. So what we're doing now is we're talking about trigonometry. And everything in the previous two lessons that we did, we solved trig ratios that had a missing part of the fraction. We never solved any with a missing angle. So we have to be able to do this. So how do you think we solve sine of x equals 1 half? Well, in the first two problems here of the opening exercise, we used opposite operations to get it so that we solve the answer. So if I have something that's multiplied, I divide, that's opposite operation. If I have something squared, I square root, that's opposite operation. So there's got to be an opposite operation to the sine of x equals one half. That would allow me to just get x by itself. So let's see what that is. So on the next page here, there's no math involved for you to do here. We're just kind of talking. So it says in trigonometry, to solve sine of x equals one half, we need to use what we call the inverse of sine. The inverse of sine and arc sine are the same exact thing. It's just they have two names for the same exact thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the um, arc sine or the inverse sine of both sides of the equation. That cancels the sine and the arc sine out on the left-hand side here leaving us just with x, which is what we want. And then we just have to type this into our calculator. Now, to type this into our calculator, we need to remember that arc sine is the same thing as sine negative 1 of 1 half. I'm going to be honest with you. After this page, you're never going to see the word arc sine again in this course. Okay? So how do I type that into our calculator? Oops. So to type that into the calculator, we have to first make sure we're in degree mode. So those of you that haven't been bringing your calculators the last few days, make sure it's in degree mode. And then we have to type in sine negative 1 of 1 half. So you'll notice in your calculator is if you hit second and then the sine key, you get sine negative 1. So it's second, then the sine key, or second, then the cosine key, or second, then the tangent key. Type in the fraction or the ratio that you have and hit enter, and it tells you the angle. They're all going to be pretty much messy decimals. This one's not. So in your calculator, if you type in the sine negative 1 of 1 half, you should get 30 degrees. So now what this means is we can find missing angles of these triangles as long as I know two of the three sides. So let's take a look at an example. So it says find to nearest... Uh, Find an angle of the boy to the top of the tree, round your answer to nearest 100. So we have a missing angle. We always use theta for missing angles, unless they already provided us with a variable. Now, if theta is my angle, the 28 is the opposite side. The 40, well, that's the adjacent side. So when I'm looking at it, I have to figure out, well, which ratio do I have enough information to use? So I have the opposite side, so it can't be cosine. I have the adjacent side, so it can't be sine. It's got to be tangent. So I know the tangent of the angle, which we don't know, is equal to the opposite side, 28, or the adjacent side, 40. Now to do this, we're going to take the inverse tan of both sides. So I'm going to do tan negative 1 of tan of theta is equal to tan negative 1 of 28 over 40. These are going to cancel. And I'm left with theta is equal to whatever that comes out to be in my calculator. So I'm going to hit second, 10 of 28 divided by 40. And I get 34.99, which becomes 35. Uh, no, it says around to the nearest hundredth, so we did it the right way. 34.99 degrees. All right, so let's take a look at another one here. So example number two, 
uh, asks us to find angle A. So notice here they gave us an angles variable. So instead of using theta, we'll just use A. So if this is my given angle, 13 is the adjacent side and 20 is the hypotenuse side. So when we're looking at SOHCAHTOA, I'm going to use cosine because that's A and H. So I'm going to say the cosine of the angle, A, is equal to the adjacent side, 13, over the hypotenuse side, 20. Now I want to solve this. So I'm going to use inverse cosine of cosine of A is equal to the inverse cosine of 13 over 20. I'm taking the inverse cosine of both sides. That allows me to cancel those two cosines. They're opposite operations. So now I'm left with A equals whatever that comes out to be. So second, then cosine of 13 divided by 20. These angles should all be less than 90 degrees. So if you get something that's not, you mess something up. All right, so here it says round to the nearest degree. So it's 49.4. So it's just going to stay 49 degrees. For the next one, we have angle B. We have the opposite side and we have the hypotenuse side. So that would be the sine ratio because of so, S-O-H. Right, so we could say the sine of angle B is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. So then we can say, all right, I have the inverse sine of sine of B is equal to the inverse sine of 40 over 42. Those cancel. So I'm going to put B is equal to the inverse sine of 40 over 42. Well, whatever that comes out to be becomes my answer. And we got 72 degrees. Keep going here. So example number three gives us a word prompt. So we have to draw a picture, right? So it says a 16-foot ladder leans against the wall. So we have a wall, we have a 16-foot ladder, and we don't know how tall that wall is. It says the ladder is seven feet from the wall. So that must be this horizontal side. And it says find the vertical distance from the ground to the point on the ladder. Well, you would think that this is a trigonometry question, but it's really just Pythagorean theorem. I have two sides and I want to find the remaining side. So I would say seven squared plus X squared equals 16 squared or 49 plus x squared equals 256, or x squared is equal to 256 minus 49. We're all good at algebra. We can do that. 207 says nearest tenth. So when I take the square root of both sides, I don't have to worry about simplifying like I did earlier in the chapter. I just have to type that into my calculator. Square root of 207 to the nearest tenth is 14.4 feet. Then it says determine the measure of the angle formed by the ladder and the ground. So where the ladder and the ground meet is going to be this angle here. So that's the angle. This is adjacent. And this is hypotenuse. Notice I'm not going to use this value I just found. Although it's right, I rounded it. So I don't want to use something that's been rounded because that can kind of cause my answer to be wrong. So because I have adjacent and hypotenuse, I'm going to use cosine. So I have the cosine of the angle is equal to 7 over 16. And since I'm trying to find an angle, I need to use inverse cosine of both sides. Essentially, what you can always remember, if I'm asking you to find an angle, it's going to have inverse cosine in it. So you got to do something different in your calculator. That's what you can always say to yourself. So then if I type that something different into my calculator, second cosine of 7 over 16, I get nearest degree, so that's the nearest whole number, so 64 degrees. The next one, these are, I, I would, if I was teaching this lesson in class, I would be telling you to try these three on your own at this point, right? So I'm going to go through them obviously with you, but if you feel comfortable and you want to keep moving along, or you want to get to your homework questions and see if you did them right, go for it, right? You don't have to feel like you have to wait for me. So if that's angle C, this is opposite, this is adjacent, so that becomes tangent. So I'm going to say this is the tangent of C is equal to 14 over 29 or C is equal to the inverse tangent of 14 over 29. You don't actually have to write the step of showing that you tangent, the inverse tangent both sides. We know that you did that, all right? So if we type that on our calculator, round to the nearest degree, angle C is 26 degrees. 
For the measure of angle D, we can actually use any trig function we want. The reason why is we know all three sides. So we have the adjacent side, we have the hypotenuse side, and we have the opposite side. So pick your favorite trig ratio. It doesn't matter which one you pick. So since we just did tangent, I'm going to use uh, cosine. So I'll say the cosine of D is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side. So I could say D is equal to the inverse cosine of 51 over 85. So second cosine, 51 over 85, and we get an angle D of 53 degrees. Now you might be saying, well, what if I chose cosine, uh, I'm sorry, instead of cosine sine or tangent, wouldn't it be a different answer? And the answer is no. The ratios are all going to be different fractions, but since you're taking a different ratio of sine, cosine, or tangent, it generates a different answer. Number three, roller coaster travels 80 feet up a track, so there you go. We have our loading zone, and we have a horizontal distance of 50 feet. We want to know the angle between the ramp and the horizontal distance of 50 feet. So we have the adjacent side, the hypotenuse side, so again, we have a cosine function. So the cosine of that missing angle, I'm going to use theta. If you really want to use x, you can. It's 50 over 80. So theta is equal to the inverse cosine of 50 over 80. Type that in your calculator, and you get your answer. Because we're looking for an angle, we know that we have to take inverse cosine here. It says nearest tenth of a degree, so that's one decimal place. So that would be 51.3 degrees. Some regions questions for you to try here, right? Number one is really tough, right? We got to do a lot of stuff here for number one. So it says a man is five foot nine inches tall, has a shadow of eight foot six inches. So here's your man, and the shadow comes down. Now the problem is, what is nine foot, I'm sorry, five foot nine inches? It's not 5.9 feet, right? Nine inches is nine twelfths of a foot, which is nine divided by 12, that's 0.75 of a foot. So when we say the man is five foot nine inches, he is 5.75 feet tall. Same thing with eight foot six inches. Well, six inches is half a foot, so it would be 8.5 feet. It then wants to find the angle of elevation from the top of the end of the shadow to the top of the man's head. So the angle of elevation is down here, elevating up towards the top of the man's head. Right? Picture a man. I'll do it in a different color. Here's my man standing here. Hey, look at me. All right? So now if we say this is the opposite side and adjacent side, this becomes a tangent problem. So I could say the tangent of this unknown angle is equal to 5.75 divided by 8.5. Since I want to know the angle, I need to use inverse tangent of that decimal. So second tangent of 5.75 divided by 8.5. And that gives us an answer of 34.1 degrees. Now here's the deal. If you make this 5.9 instead of 5.75, it's probably one of these other choices. Mean, I know. The next one asks us to find angle A. So if that's angle A, this is adjacent, this is hypotenuse. So this would be a cosine of A is equal to 9 over 14, or A is equal to the inverse cosine of 9 over 14. Second cosine of 9 divided by 14, well, that gives us about 50 degrees. Number three, another word problem. So a ladder leans against a building. The top of the ladder touches a building at... 10 feet above the ground. The foot of the ladder is 4 feet from the building. Find the angle the ladder makes with the ground. There's your picture. So we have the opposite side and the adjacent side, so we have a tangent function. So if tangent is 10 over 4, I want to know the angle. So it's inverse tan. That's where I'm going to get inverse tan there. Do second tangent of 10 divided by 4. And we get nearest degree, so nearest whole number. Theta is 68 degrees. Number four is tough. Number four is tough. So number four gives us this situation about this um, tractor trailer or this truck moving somewhere as a projection screen, right? Um, so we have two angles we can find. We have the big angle and we have the small angle. 
if I know angle X and I know angle Y, I can subtract them to find angle theta. So I actually have to do two different problems here. So to find angle Y, I'm going to use this small triangle, which has an opposite side of 12 and an adjacent side of 75. So I could say the tangent of Y is equal to 12 over 75. Now, if I want to find X, I need to know that this side is 72. That's the opposite side. Adjacent is still 75. So if I want to find X, I would say the tangent of X is equal to 72 over 75. Still tangent because it's still opposite over adjacent. Now, if we find each one of these angles, right? Let me just get back to blue. I don't like writing in red. So we could say y is equal to the inverse tangent of 12 over 75, and x is equal to the inverse tangent of 72 over 75. I can find y, so second tan, 12 over 75, 9.1, and second tangent of 72 divided by 75, 43.8. Uh, I can say theta is the subtraction of those two. So if I just subtract those two, 43.8 minus 9.1 winds up being... Um, 43.7, it says nearest tenth, so that's good, 43.7 degrees. That one is tough. That's about as hard as I've seen on the Regents exam. All right, let's check out some homework. So number one says a triangle ABC has a side of AC of 29. It says AB is 17 and angle ABC is 90 degrees. That means angle B is the right angle. So AC is 29, that's the hypotenuse. AB is 17, and it wants us to find the measure of angle BAC, so that's this angle here, meaning this is the adjacent and hypotenuse sides. So we have cosine, so the cosine of angle A is equal to 17 over 29. The reason why it's cosine is those are the sides they gave me. Now, if I want to find the angle, I need to use inverse cosine. All right, so I'm taking the inverse cosine of both sides. So I have second cosine of 17 divided by 29. So angle A to the nearest degree is 54 degrees. Number two says we have this communications tower. We have the antenna, the wire, all that stuff. And it wants us to find to nearest hundredth of a degree the measure of the angle between the wire making with the ground. So that we don't know. Here's my angle, unknown angle. I use theta. So the opposite side is... 30, the hypotenuse side is 50, telling us we're going to use sine. A sine of theta is equal to 30 over 50. So theta is equal to the inverse sine of 30 over 50, or theta is equal to whatever that is. So second sine of 30 divided by 50 is 36.87. 36.87. Thirty-six point eight seven degrees. It says nearest hundredth, so that's two decimal places. Last question. So number three says, a seen Indian company diagram. You have a person traveling from New York to Buffalo. It's one hundred and seventy miles, and it wants to know what is the angle between Buffalo and Albany from New York City, right? So I want to know x. So two eighty is the opposite side. One seventy is the adjacent side. This is a tangent ratio. So we have 280 divided by 170, tangent inverse, to get rid of the uh, tan, so we get x by itself, of 280 over 170, and type that in and see what we get. So we have second tan, 280 divided by 170, and we get 58.7, says nearest degree, so that would be 59 degrees. All right. Hopefully this video helped, right? Keep watching these as we move forward throughout the rest of this chapter. Remember, if you miss something or you have something that you need help with, just go back and watch another video, right? They're all there right on YouTube. Um, and again, hopefully these help, and I will see you all tomorrow.